Hi, I'm Jeffrey DeSmit and I'm going to show you how to optimize a school timetable to create a better schedule for teachers and students alike. I'm going to use our open source software for this called OptaPlanner and uh, let's take a look what it does. So here we have a number of lessons, math, chemistry, French and history, and we need to assign those to a time slot, 8.30 or 9.30, and to a room, room A or room B. Now there's a number of constraints. For example, math and chemistry are actually uh, attended by the same students and chemistry and French are taught by the same teacher. So we give all of these uh, data to OptaPlanner and it's going to find a solution for us where it makes sure that all of these constraints are fulfilled. So as you can see in the solution, um, for example, Marie Curie is first teaching French in room B and then chemistry in room A, in room A but not at the same time. On top of this, we will also add soft constraints. So, for example, to give the teachers a compact schedule so they don't get two lessons that are with a, lot, with a big gap between them. This is the OptaPlanner Quick Start application for school time tabling. So what you can see here is we have a number of rooms, A, B and C here, number of time slots from Monday morning till Monday evening and Tuesday morning till Tuesday evening. And then we have a number of lessons here at the bottom that we need to assign, such as biology, chemistry, geography and so forth. Now you can see we already have math assigned to 9 o'clock, uh, 8.30 and uh, to room A here. So let's see what happens if we solve this. We can still move this one. So let's see if we what happens if we start solving this. So here's OptoPlanner comes with a solution. And as we give it a bit more time, it actually comes with a lot of multiple schedules. And the schedules actually improve the quality of the schedules. You can see that here on the score on the top. Now we actually have a score of zero hard and 10 soft. So what does that mean? Well, zero hard means there's no hard constraints broken. So for example, if you look over here, there's only one lesson per room at a certain time slot. It's never putting two lessons in the same room at the same time, right? If you look at the student group, uh, what you see is every student group, the ninth grade here, for example, only has one lesson at the same time. It never had no student group ever has two lessons at the same time. And of course, by the, for the teachers, we just see the same thing, right? Every teacher the, uh, can teach all of its lessons and they don't have to be at two places at the same time. And that's and when that is the case, then we have zero hard constraints broken, right? Now there's also 10 soft constraints. That's actually a positive number. And that's tells us that 10 times it was able to compact the schedule for the teachers. And we can see the effects of this right here. So for example, Darwin has two lessons, but those lessons are actually back to back, which is ideal for him because he only has to come to the school once and actually just, and he doesn't have any uh, gap hours in between. Same we see for Marie, Marie Curie, five lessons in a row. That's just ideal for her. And uh, we see for the other teachers, mostly a compact schedule, but we have one exception here, uh, Indiana Jones does have uh, two lessons with a, with a gap between them and of course the same goes for Penelope Cruz over here. Now um, that's because of all of the, of the other constraints, so of the hard constraints which I explained earlier, but also maybe potentially some of the soft constraints. Right. So how is this implemented behind the scenes? Well, um, behind the scenes, all this uses a Java class model, right? And so we have a time slot where we have a day of week, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, a start time and an end time. Then we have a room, right? And then, of course, we have a lesson. A lesson has a subject, a teacher and a student group. A subject could be math, a teacher could be Marie Curie, and of course, a student group could be ninth or 10th grade or something like that. And then, of course, these are assigned to a slime slot and a room. So um, Java-wise, these are pretty simple Java beans, you know, gather setters potentially if you want those. And that's about it. And then, of course, there's the constraints. So let's take a look at the constraints, right? So constraint-wise, um, there's a timetable constraint provider. And what this thing does is it actually enumerates the constraints uh, we've, uh, I've, I've shown you earlier. So one of them is, for example, the room conflict. That's a hard constraint that says when you have uh, a pair of two different lessons that are in the same time slot in the same room, then we want to penalize that with a hard rate, where we basically say this should never, ever, ever happen. Otherwise, the schedule is not feasible. And in a similar way, we have uh, the teacher conflict and the student group conflict to make sure that none of these have to be in two places at the same time. So let's see what happens if we disable some of these constraints. So let's disable the uh, teacher uh, conflict constraint and the student group conflict constraint and of course the soft constraints here too. I'll explain in a minute what they do. And uh, let's go back to the implementation and let's reload that. And this is using Quarkus so I can just refresh and actually 
um, and restart the application in just a half of a, a second or so. So I'll click solve again. And now it's going to solve with those new constraints. So on first sight, everything looks fine because all of the uh, there's no two lessons in the same room at the same time. But if you actually look at per teacher, you'll see that in some cases, uh, well, this turns out fine. Uh, that's by accident. But if you look at my student group, you can clearly see there's some issues here, right? So Monday, 8.30 uh, uh, time slot, we have two lessons for the ninth grade at the same time. We we're asking these these students to be in two places at the same time. So that's not good. So we can go back here. We can actually enable that constraint again for the student groups. And when we then go back to the application, we refresh it again. Here we go. We uh, solve it again. And what actually happens now is uh, it's good for the rooms. It's good for the student groups, as you can see. Uh, but uh, let's see how it turns out for the teachers. We didn't have that constraint this time. It actually violated that. Uh, because they didn't know it existed so we actually have uh, the case where we are asking a teacher to be at two places at the same time similarly we can fix that again too right and so we can enable this one again so what are these other soft constraints here well the first the one i showed talked about earlier was the teacher time efficiency constraint that's to that's to compact the schedule to make sure that we only have um, that teachers can teach back to back basically and don't have to uh, come in in the morning for an hour and then in the afternoon and lose a lot of time uh, traveling back and forth to the school. There's another one. There's a teacher room stability constraint, which makes sure that the teacher is always teaching in the same room. Uh, so he can actually decorate that room specifically for uh, his class. For example, you can imagine um, if you have a mat, uh, if you're a mat teacher, you would like to hang up maybe uh, some posters uh, that uh, to teach about math, right? And then uh, there's a student group, the subject variety constraint, which just makes sure that students don't get, you know, two lessons of maths in a row or two lessons of uh, French in a row or two lessons of you know, anything in a row, right? Um, why? So they can really, um, students typically prefer to have some, var some variety in their uh, subjects on a particular morning or afternoon, right? So let's enable that one too, okay? And then, uh, of course, if we go back, we go back, we get back the original schedule. Now you can see by some coding, you can actually add your own constraints. For example, you have certain teachers who don't like to teach in the morning. You can easily add a constraint for that. Don't give them morning lessons. Others like to prefer in the like to prefer to teach in the afternoon or in the beginning of the week. It's all possible. Um, and um, the sky is the limit with these constraints, right? Now you can see here it's it's again solved and just to show you about the the teacher the the, the, the students groups their variety you can see uh, well there's one violation here they have two times English in a row but most of the time uh, you'll see that oh here two maths in a row uh, but most of the time you'll see that they do have a good variety they're not go doing two lessons of the same thing in a row right so um, and of course, if you think this shouldn't really shouldn't be happening, you can just increase the weight on that constraint, make it more important than the other ones. For example, the teacher um, uh, compactness constraint, and uh, then you'll get uh, less of you know less of those incidents happening, but potentially more teachers having a non-compact schedule. Of course, there's trade-offs. You can't have it all, uh, but you can do a be much better schedule than what you do right now uh, in a manual way or with uh, less sophisticated algorithms, right? And so you can create a win-win situation for both the students and the, stu and the teachers. So if you want more, if you want to try out, if you want to run this code yourself, go to optoplanner.org. And what you can do is you can, there's a link here to the clone to the quick starts code, right? And you can actually just grab the quick starts code for there, or you can actually download the quick starts directly with the, the green button. Thanks for watching.